We began the 2013 baseball state tournament with nine BPS teams in action, but by Thursday, we were down to just two. And wouldn't you know it, they squared off against each other. We have a rematch of last year's state championship as the Fenway Panthers take on the Greater New Bedford Lady Bears. Hello everyone, I'm Pat Flaherty, along with my partner as always, Alan Platt. And Alan, as a year goes by, some things change, but some things stay the same. <laughs> right. And now New Bedford taking on Fenway for the second well, year in a row. Even though White Stadium is big enough to fit 10,000 people, the field, the bleachers, and even the locker rooms are maintained by just one man. Now that we're in the month of November, it's city championship time for the fall high school sports season. And despite last week's hurricane, the Boston Public Schools were able to squeeze in those games just before the state tournament. One of the more intriguing finals was on the boys' soccer field when Madison Park looked to make a city championship three-peat as they took on Boston International on Thursday. Let's head to Charlestown High School for this one. There you see the Madison Park Cardinals looking to make it three in a row. We're going to pick it up in the second half. No score. That's Steven Teixeira with the kick right there, but it's a save by Joao Rosa. He keeps the game scoreless there for Madison Park. Madison in the white ensuing possession. Freshman Bill Tolo slips it past the Boston International keeper. Madison Park goes up one to zip there in the second half. We're going to fast forward now to late in the second half. Still one to nothing. Fabio Goncalves off the rebound right here. He's going to score for Boston International. He ties it up at one apiece. We head to overtime and they forced penalty kicks. So first two kicks for both squads were good. Third kick for Madison Park. Coven Ortiz scores that one, finds the corner, puts Madison Park up three to two on PKs. Now it's Boston International's turn, but Rosa comes up with the big save, keeps Madison Park ahead three to two. Fourth penalty kick now for Madison Park. And Mika Perez gets it past the international keeper, puts Madison Park up four to two. So if Madison saves this one, they go on to win. Rosa comes up with the huge save right there for the Cardinals. Madison Park beats Boston International in the City Soccer Championship 2-1. We began the 2013 Baseball State Tournament with nine BPS teams in action, but by Thursday, we were down to just two. And wouldn't you know it, they squared off against each other. The West Roxbury Raiders baseball team took on Boston International on Thursday at Bentley University, with the winner earning a spot in the state semifinals. So to Bentley we go for this one. There you see Boston International, the number one seed in Division IV North. We're going to head to the top of the second. Runners on first and third for West Roxbury. Ruel De La Rosa with the RBI single there through the right side of the infield. Juan Pereira scores from third. The Raiders go up one to zip there in the top of the second. Top of the fourth now, same score. Cesar Garcia up the middle. There's a play at the plate right here, but Gene Dunn beats the throw. Westy goes up two to zip there in the top of the fourth for the Raiders. I'm going to head to the top of the fifth now. Runners at second and third. It's Juan Pereira at the dish. He knocks it to left. Both runners. Wood coming to score as that ball gets by the outfield. They go up four to zip. There does Westy. They would score two more runs in the inning to go up six to zip. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Curry College here for the Division V MIAA Super Bowl between the Upper Cape Cod Rams and the Dorchester Bears. Hello, everyone. I'm Pat Flaherty, along with my partner, as always, Alan Platt. Alan, the entire 2012 Football season comes down right. to today. We have undefeated Dorchester taking on 9-1 and one Upper Cape Cod. Can't get any better than this. Not at all. Culmination of a great season. Super Bowl Saturday in Massachusetts is always the biggest high school football day of the season. I mean, all of the, this region, a bunch of games down at Foxborough, a couple of That's games right. out at Bentley College here at Curry College. So an amazing time for football players, fans, coaches, alumni, <laughs> former players. So uh, a lot of fun. You mentioned uh, Dorchester, dream season. I mean, we saw them a few times during the year. I started the year with them, as a matter of fact, then saw them uh, as they finished off their regular season perfect, and now they're trying for that ultimate perfect season. We talk about Dorchester, and when you, anytime you talk about the Bears, you got to talk a fast defense. We're going to spotlight that defense right now. Dorchester's defense, they gang tackle, they fly around the football. Oh, That's their oh. calling card. Here their this quickness, year. their speed, 
very aggressive team, and uh, that's what they've done it all season. Uh, uh, I think that, that the coaching staff has been very proud of the fact that they pride themselves on winning football games defensively. They, they can score, too, but they don't worry about scoring. They, they run the wing tee, a lot of running, very little if no passing, but they, they definitely defend to depend on their special teams and their defense from scrimmage to win their games. We've seen that defense create turnovers, gang tackle, able to corral a lot of different offenses this year. That bright and explosive offense, they corralled that Madison Park offense that get, got them all the way to the Gillette Stadium. So certainly they've done well against a couple of good teams this season that can play offense well. Meanwhile, for Upper Cape Cod, you were talking about Upper Cape coming at 9-1. and one. They were very close themselves to a perfect season. They lost That's to right. Holbrook. Uh, in a crazy game, 34-30, they actually came back and scored two touchdowns in the fourth quarter That's right. to make that a very close game. Just couldn't get the final tally to win that one. And, and Upper Cape Cod was actually kind of biting their nails around Thanksgiving because they needed Holbrook to That's lose right. to West right. Bridgewater on Turkey Day to get to the postseason, and that happened. And they are now here at Curry College in the Division Five Super Bowl. Dorchester with the football right around midfield on first down. Man in motion is Cyprian. They give it off to Robin Cyprian over the right side. He's looking for the corner. Corner. Excellent form tackle in the backfield by the Rams. I'll tell you, these two teams are almost like looking in the mirror. Like you mentioned, you, you have Upper Cape that also likes to run the wing tee, but uh, Cyprian, look for Cyprian Taylor. They, they'll, they'll probably try to get as many carries as possible. Good job on the edge there. You see the cornerback coming up, forcing him deep in the backfield. Isaac Cardozo, the corner for the Upper Cape Cod Rams, coming up with that tackle. One yard loss on the play, second down and 11 now for the Dorchester Bears. They pitch it over the left side this time. And Hakeem Harris gets past the 45 to the 44-yard line. Good pickup on second down for the running back. Defense. Hamilton jumper knocks it down from the free throw line. Leroy Hamilton is a 6'3 senior forward for the two-time state champion New Mission Titans. While having to take a back seat to last season's standout seniors, Leroy thrived as a role player, a job that he gladly accepted during New Mission's championship run. It's been a great experience playing with a great group of guys that I know ever since my freshman year. So it's, it's guys that we can, um, for the seniors, that they can go out with a win, you know, and we can just all be able to celebrate. While not often the leading scorer on the Titans, Leroy was able to help New Mission win their second straight title by bringing many other skills to the court. He does everything. I mean, he, he shoots really well. He rebounds. He does all the little things to help. Like, he gets in, gets he gets at least three or four offensive rebounds a game, and he also gets and gets the steals, the, the loose balls, and stuff like that. He's always listening and taking criticism, both good and bad, regardless on how he can make his game better or what he should do to make the teammates around him better. Leroy has also earned a great deal of respect from New Mission head coach Corey McCarthy, who appreciates Leroy's character, his leadership, and a skill that he performs better than just about anyone. His jump shot is money. I mean, I love the way he shoots the ball. Um, his form is perfect, um, and he, he, he narrows in on the hoop. But even amongst jack-of-all-trades basketball players, Leroy is unique because the skills he brings to the basketball court are only half his story. Leroy Hamilton was born with a deformity on his left hand, leaving him with just a pinky and an extra large thumb. But even though he plays a sport where hand-eye coordination is essential, Leroy's abnormality first went unnoticed by his teammates and coaches. He was a quiet kid. He did a really good job of hiding it. Like, I couldn't tell at all. Nobody sees it. Like people in the crowd that comes to our games all the time. My mother, for instance, she didn't even know. And she comes to every game. And she knows Leroy personally. And she didn't even know there was something wrong. Oh, yeah. oh, Book. Melvin Booker starts on defense for the Becker College football team. As a freshman, he ranks second on the Hawks with 59 tackles. And according to his coaches, he's one of Becker's most impressive athletes. Melvin right now is, is one of our most gifted uh, athletes on this football team. Uh, Speed-wise and, and agility and physicality, he's at the top of the, uh, the totem pole on, you know, for us. Melvin also brings that same work ethic and determination to the classroom, where he carries a 3.0 GPA. 
My high school coach said if I was to ever put in as much work as I did on the field in the classroom, I'd be a scholar. So I'm just trying to, you know, put forth that effort. The character of every good person is to be humble. And uh, he's recognized on this campus. He's a superior athlete. Uh, he's uh, terrific in the classroom. But he's very soft-spoken and he's very humble. And he's very respectful. But while Becker's campus is just a 50-mile drive from his home in Boston, it seems worlds away from where Melvin's life once was. Melvin Booker was born in 1991 at Beth Israel Hospital and grew up in the neighborhood of Roxbury. But despite the infectious smile that often spread across Melvin's face, he was a tough kid to handle. Oh, he was a tough kid to deal with. He was hard-headed, he was stubborn, and he was rebelling. I was really disrespectful. Um, towards everybody around me. Never wanted to attend class, you know, never did homework, never did schoolwork. It was just like, it all didn't matter to me. Melvin's behavior worsened as he grew older. And soon his mother, Anissa, began to fear the dark path that awaited her son. In my soul, I knew that my son was going in a direction that would either lead him to jail or to the cemetery, and as a mother, I wasn't trying to have either one. One afternoon, those fears came to fruition when Melvin decided to commit armed robbery. I was with a friend, and you know, we decided to rob somebody that was, uh, you know, defenseless. You know what I mean? And unfortunately for him, you know, we, we, were, we went up on, we walked up on him uh, with, uh, you know, some guns and. Uh, you know, it was, it was, it wasn't worth it. Melvin and his friend didn't get very far. Within an hour, they were arrested in front of Randolph High School. I got caught not too long after that. I would, I wouldn't even say an hour after that, uh, around school grounds, and you know, the officer just told me like, you know, we, we got you. You know, uh, it's hard evidence. You know, you're not going anywhere for some time. Melvin was sentenced to two years in a juvenile detention center. When first incarcerated, Melvin portrayed a tough guy image, often getting in fights with other inmates. I just wasn't down to take anybody's mess. So, you know, of course people tested me and, you know, people would fight, try to fight me, and I wasn't a small kid, you know, so, you know, they would, they would get the best of it.